feet hip width apart. Nice deep breath in and out, setting yourself up, ready to go. Hands on your hips, drop your shoulders and just sway from side to side a few times. Just getting used to taking the weight onto one leg and then the other. Feeling up from the floor upwards, feeling the floor under the foot, drawing up through the leg, squeezing the glute on one side and then on the other side. Make sure your shoulders are down, ribs are down, squeezing in that lower tummy, tucking the chin, lengthening up through the back of the neck. Great. And then forwards and backwards through the toes, through the heels, feeling the weight go forwards and backwards. Good. Feeling those muscles in the foot working. There's no real right or wrong way how to use your foot muscles, but make sure they're there for you. A lot of your balance comes from the foot in the muscles around the toes and the foot and the ankles. Good. We think about balance coming from here. It does but a lot of it's coming from the toes and the feet. Lovely. So lifting one heel. Good. Squeezing the glutes, squeezing through the leg on the standing leg swap. Push the other heel down. Narrow the feet a little bit if you want to. Feel the stretch through the foot, through the big toe. Some of you I'm sure will suffer with um, Either just stiff big toes or bunions, that kind of thing is very common, unfortunately. Good. Thinking about what's happening around the foot as you do this exercise. It's a nice stretch around the foot and the ankles, as we've just talked about. But also when you push your knee backwards, you should feel the tension through your thigh. Squeeze through your bum, draw in your tummy, keeping your chest open. Good, so running through all of those postural adjustments on each of the exercises, especially when it's a slightly longer one like this. Great, stop there with your right foot circling around, coming up and around onto the toes. So we're not going tip of the toes like that. You would if you were in a shoe, but without a shoe on, you're scooping round, so you're stretching through big toe and then through the little toes and around through the outer side of the ankle as well as you circle around but also thinking about the leg you're standing on it's not always just the one you're doing the action on think about the one you're doing this the standing on <laughs> the um the balance on good bring that foot down pick up the other one circle round so make sure you don't lean over with your body keep it upright squeeze through that standing leg Good, and just relaxing your breathing as we go. Great. Lovely. Take the weight onto the right leg, squeeze and tighten up through that right leg, pick up your left up in front of you and pick up the toes as well. Place that one down, tighten through that leg and pick up your right. Good and down, tighten through there. So it's a real conscious effort to squeeze and support through the leg as you pick up the other, keeping those hips nice and level. Good. Nice, always nice to have a little pause at the top as well. When you've picked up the leg, pause, check your position, good back down, pick up, down, lovely, good work. So today I wanted to do that funny rolling up of the mat again to provide that little lift of the heels. So just rolling it about halfway, all of your mats will be slightly different sizes because they're always made a bit different but it's quite surprising, even if you've got a very thin mat just like mine, you'll still get a nice little heel raise underneath your heels as you do these squats which feels really nice around the feet and the ankles. You really feel like you bend in the right places and you feel a bit more free. So sitting back into your heels and coming up tall. If you want to check whether that makes any difference whatsoever, then just come on the floor in front of you and feel how blocked that feels. And then step back onto your mat, 
sitting back into it and squeeze everything to come up tall. Squeeze your glutes and your thighs. Good, and let's add the arms in as well. So bringing the arms up in front as you squat down. Good. Keeping the elbows locked straight. And as you come up, you pull your arms down by your sides and broaden out through the chest, open out through the chest. Squat and open out through the chest. Good. If you want to think about it as pulling your shoulder blades together, then do so. It's the same action, really. Opening the chest at the front and pulling the shoulder blades together at the back. You get the same results, if you like. Good. Nice. Two more. Lovely. Turning around. Toes on the mat. I knew I'd get really hot, really quick with all of these layers on. So there we go. Toes on the mat there. Fingertips on something next to you if you have it. I always bring that one on you, I know. And then pulling up onto your toes. It could certainly be done without. There, get your arms out to the side. <laughs> that could stabilise you nicely. But pulling up onto your toes, using that mat almost like it's a step that you're coming up on. It just feels like that little bit more than just doing it on the floor. Good. Shoulders down, chest open, draw in the tummy. Think about pulling up through the calf as you pull up onto your toes. Pull up through the calf. Good. Try to think about in engaging the whole body to do that funny little movement of just pulling up onto your calves, onto your toes. Good. Two more. Burning calves. <laughs> And then we can just step one leg forwards, the other leg back. Don't worry about where that mat is at the moment. Bend that front knee and push the back heel down to the floor. So just a quick calf stretch in between. Point everything forwards, draw in the tummy, keep the chest open, the usual, stay up tall, push the heel down behind you. So just a calf stretch, basically. Good. Stepping up, other leg back and push that other heel down to the floor. Everything pointing forwards. Good. Lovely. And I'm going to be really cruel. And we're going to do eight each leg, single leg for these calf raises. Now, I do apologise if you don't have something right next to you to put your fingertips on. <laughs> but you might be able to do it without. I might challenge myself to. One. Good. You end up using your toes a little bit more. Two. Three, four, five. Nice. Other foot. Oh, I said eight, didn't I? Another three. <laughs> one, two. Last one. Lovely. Swap legs. Okay. Up onto your toes. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Lovely. Just roll that mat back out again. You might be thinking what have calves got to do with Pilates, but um, anything where you're concentrating on the rest of the body position, the posture, we can, we can call it Pilates. So with the right leg on the floor, we're going to do our RDLs where you stretch one leg back like that. So you pick up the left leg, leaning forwards into it and come up tall. Think about yourself as a seesaw. <sighs> we'll keep that back leg straight, knee locked straight and don't rotate to the side. So we're not, um, we're not doing like an aeroplane where you rotate, you keep everything pointing forwards. Good. Last one. Lovely. Swap legs. You can point the other way if you wanted to, but just swap legs generally. <laughs> okay, one. Good. Keep those hips pointing forwards. Two. Don't rotate. Three. Keep the back from arching. Four. Keep the back leg straight. Five. Six. Two more.
Lovely. Facing forwards again. Good. Believe it or not, that's for your hamstrings. Some of you may have felt the hamstrings, some of you may feel your hamstrings later. <laughs> it's a funny one like that. So if you do a bit apart again, hands on your hips, you take your weight over to your left leg. The right leg you just scoop out to the side there without hitching the hip or leaning to the side. We're going to keep going out to one side. Keep those toes pointing forwards as well though. Don't be tempted to point the toes where they're going. Keep them pointing forwards. Think in a way about leading with your heel. Good, keeping strong here and hips level. Lovely. Good, you just take that leg as far as you can before it feels like it wants to stop. It's at that point that you would want to lean over to the side or hitch up the hip. Lovely. Other leg, and it may well be the standing leg that got tired there rather than the one that was lifting. So taking the weight on the right leg, drawing in the tummy, scooping the other leg out to the side, keeping those toes pointing forwards. Three. And you'll suddenly feel it in those glutes at the side there. Two more. Lovely. Oh, I think that might be enough on the legs. I can just definitely feel those having worked. So let's point the hands upwards, like so. We're just scooping forwards and back, keeping the palms up. Good. Dropping the shoulders. And think when you bring the elbows back, think about pulling the shoulder blades together. Imagine there's a piece of elastic attached to your fingertips and the wall in front of you. And you're doing like a, a rowing motion, pulling the shoulders back, drawing the shoulder blades together. Suddenly, hopefully, you can feel a bit of action going on in there. Even though you haven't got a resistance pulling, pulling you forwards, you're still, you know, even with that imaginary resistance, there's a lot more muscle action. It just shows how much of a workout goes on in your brain. Good. Stay at the front and we're going wide and together with the hands. So the, the little fingers come together at the front. Make sure your knees are a little bit bent and your weight is back through your heels. And make sure your palms are facing up the whole time and your elbows are straight. Hands are as high as the shoulders, but they also don't go back past the shoulders. Good. Lovely. Um, hands up above the head, palms together, and pulse in and out. So as if you're doing a silent clap above your head. <laughs> Good. Draw those ribs down, scoop in the tummy, Knees then, bottom under. Good. Rotate the palms out and then in. Out, then in. So that, believe it or not, will be activating those triceps as you rotate out and in there. Your shoulders should be down away from your ears, so you're not squashing up through your ears there. But not too forcefully. Oh, bring them down. Woo. Roll a couple of times there. All right, lovely. So, standing on the end of the mat, there's all the boxes ticked for the standing work for me. <laughs> As you can see how my mind works, I have my lesson plan. All right, breathe in, breathe out, tuck your chin, curling down. Good. Um, if your fingertips are on the floor, then well done for a start. Walk your hands a little bit forwards, like that. <laughs> just walk them forwards. Now, if your fingertips aren't on the floor, you can just stretch the arms forwards like that. Good. Don't bend your knees to get the fingertips on the floor. I'd rather the knees were straight, but the arms a little bit higher. Good. But if you have your fingertips on the floor, see how far you can walk them forwards and then come back, but please don't forget to let the head go heavy. I'm the worst one for that. So let the neck go, let the shoulders go. Walking the hands forwards. Breathe in and out and 
brought them back to your feet again. Good, walking them forwards. In and out. And walk them back in. Lovely. Bend and sit on the heels. And then straight away, push your bottom straight back up again. Some people don't like this one. And if you have had knee problems and you're wary, I wouldn't blame you. Bend your knees again, sit on the heels. And then push straight back up. Good. One more, as long as you're confident. Bend. And back up. Great. Coming down on hands and knees. Good. Well, let's revisit um, working through the shoulders in this position. So your knees should be underneath your hips. Your back should be nice and flat, not arched, not dropped, nice and flat. Scoop in the tummy and it's around the shoulder blades that I'm interested. So pushing up and away and then dropping down. Push up and away. And down. Good. Keep the elbows locked. Keep those, yeah, definitely keep your elbows straight. I just have to repeat that. Two pieces of advice, keep your elbows straight, keep your elbows straight. <laughs> Good, and it's moving around the shoulder blades. What I do love in a class is to actually come around and tap people between the shoulder blades because that usually gives them an idea of where they need to move. Okay, enough of that though, settle somewhere in between and we're just going to try and use the pelvis now. So just similar to when we're lying down, tucking and lifting. So the difference if you wanted to see would be, this would be the big normal movement that we do here, a cat and cow. But I actually want you to keep your top half still now and just use the pelvis. So it's a smaller movement and it's more specific. You're really specifically trying to stick your bottom out and then specifically trying to tuck your bottom under. And what you do when you tuck your bottom under is to draw on those really deep core muscles, deep abdominal muscles to do it. Good. Lovely. 10 press ups in this position. Have your hands just a little bit wider than your mat. And I would like your elbows to go straight out to the side. And um, so it's just a box press up. So your hips stay above your knees and we'll do 10 of them. One, you get your chin as close to the floor as you can, but don't poke it forwards. See, so I should say forehead. Two. Three. Four. Five, keep scooping in your tummy. Six. Seven. Good, okay, right leg, I would like you to stretch back and then I would like you to bring it to the side and then across the body. Lovely for the lower back to ease this off and loosen it, but also great for the glutes. So side and across. Allow the body to bend on this one. So allow you to banana from side to side. not lifting too high, sort of scooping along the floor almost. Great. Bring that knee to the floor, make sure the knees start at least, hip width apart. Good. And then the other leg, side and across. Good, allowing that back to bend. Two. Keeping that knee locked still. <laughs> Last one. Good. And then going back to basics with this hands and knees position, quite often it will be opposite arm and leg lift. So let's run through 10 on each arm and leg for that one. Right arm out forwards, left leg behind. But make sure you're not going up. So the idea is not to go up, not going up and down like that. We're going out. Think of a hunting dog. <laughs> Good. 
sat up in on a country walk this morning. <laughs> Draw in your tummy. Good, tighten the thigh, stretch out through the thigh. Keep that tummy strong as well. One more each side. Lovely. Sitting back on the heels there. Good, widen the knees. So you've got space to sink down. Let the head go heavy and in fact, tuck the forehead down to the floor and stretch your fingertips away. Breathing in and out. And let's come up to the hands and knees and then drop the hips down, arching the back the other way, dropping the hips down, dropping the shoulders. I've got no interest in whether your hips are down to the floor in front. So lock out and straighten the elbows, drop the shoulders. And actually that probably lifts you up and away from the floor a little bit, but I'd rather that than everything sinks and then you drop down into it. So nice and poised. Good. Fantastic. Um, so sitting, coming around into sitting. Good. Knees bent. And I'd like you to pull your arms, hands into your chest like that as you curl back and then push them forwards as you come back up into the chest and push them forwards. Good. I feel like it's that sort of universal heart beating kind of <laughs> motion. Tucking your bottom under, curling back, scooping in the tummy and then pull yourself up tall as you stretch forwards. So resist the temptation of sort of back and forward like that. So it's not a forward reach. It's just the arms go forwards, but the chest and the body comes up. Good. Nice, constantly drawing in, pulling up tall. Two more. Good. Um, Curl back, a bit of endurance here, because I'm not giving you a rest in between. Keep your hands on your chest there and rotating, reaching down with that elbow, but I've got no expectation of that elbow to come to the floor. We're still in our backwards position. If you're really struggling with it, with your abs or your back's hurting, you can be upright rotating around if you want to. But think about rotating around your spine. So from your head to your tailbone there's a rod and you're rotating around it. Good, that's what the spine's supposed to do. Good, one more each side. Lovely. Pinning forwards, getting forwards, forwards, stretching out your back. Good, good. So lying down on your back. This is the bit that feels nice. <laughs> good, good. Tucking the chin, broadening out through the chest, pulling the shoulders down away from the ears, pulling the shoulder blades down, sinking your ribs, finding the arch in the back, make sure you rock flat in the back and then lift up and away. But it all comes from that rocking of the pelvis, tucking under, Sticking your bottom out. Good. Settling halfway in between, remembering the importance of that. That is your neutral pelvis. That's where your deep abdominals work best, which is why we always insist on that. Don't worry, it's not an exact science. It's just not flat and not arched. You are somewhere in between. Good, and it's usually where people naturally sit. Some people sit with their back flat. So if you lift up, find that little arch and that little gap, and then tighten through the pelvic floor. Pelvic floor acts, gives you access to your deep abdominals. If you tighten, that's your cue. Tighten pelvic floor, makes you tighten through your core. Good, it rhymes, I should use that. Lift and down, one leg at a time. Apart from your pelvic floor, is part of your core. Glutes, pelvic floor, abs, 
all of it. <laughs> Keeping the ribs down, drawing in your tummy, not lifting the toes up too high, they should only come to knee level. Shin level with your ceiling. Good. And not a lot of action going on in here. If you feel really grippy, 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 you're using your outer muscles. And the disadvantage of that is that um, the deep ones will have no chance of working. And if the deep ones have no chance of working, you can't move smoothly. Deep core muscles allow you to move and twist and turn and pick things up and stabilise with movement. Outer muscles, like your six pack, biceps, triceps, all they know how to do is create a movement, not stabilise as you move. So if your outer muscles stabilise, they stabilise you as a stiff board. So all right for something like a hammer thrower or a discus thrower who has to just stay stiff as a board and then let go. Well, they probably disagree with me, to be honest, but I'm just trying to find some kind of analogy <laughs> there. Lovely. All right, lower one knee out and come back up. And then the other knee. Good. So unlike maybe a gymnast who the movement has to flow, but they have to be incredibly stable through that movement. That's all the deep core muscles. Good. So don't let the knee drop. Sorry, don't <laughs> let the knee drop. Don't let the hip rock from side to side. Keep those headlights on the front of your hips pointing straight forwards or straight up, I should say. Good, and keep your breathing relaxed. So your core is not working efficiently or effectively if you have to hold your breath. Great. Good, stretch out that right leg and pull back in. All of this staying strong, stretch away, pull your toes up and pull back in. Leave with the heel on the way out and pull in, sliding along with the toe. Push away and slide back on the toe. Good. One more each side. remembering to look after yourself from the top down, tucking your chin, broadening your chest, ribs down, feet and knees together, hands on your ribs, roll to the side and pull back to the centre, picking up the hip, rolling over and pull back. Good. Nice. Pick up, roll over. Good, nice for the stiff backs. Good. Let's try a variation of this one today. So as we go over to right, good, you keep your knees pinned together, but I want you to straighten that knee 10 times. Two, keeping yourself in that poised position. Three, strong through your tummy. Four, five, six. Seven, shoulders down, ribs down. Lovely, good. Roll over to the other side. Pick up that right foot, knees still stay together and straighten out. Two, three, four, <laughs> knees clicking. Five, six, tummy strong, ribs down. bring the legs back in. Good. So a few um, of those sort of double crunches, so where you crunch as far as you can, but then you push a bit more down and down again. So instead of being just two up, as in one, two, one, two, let's crunch as far as we can, give an extra little shove <laughs> down and down again, whilst maintaining that little arch in the back. Right off we go, crunch, crunch, Lovely. I 
this wine though is really good um so after those we're going to we've warmed up those outer abs we can feel the sort of the, the crunch kind of abs the um rectus abdominis or six pack so we're going to use those now with this next exercise by closing down at the front so the right leg comes up we think about closing down as if we're going to crunch pick up the left right down left down always concentrating on not pushing outwards through our tummy pick up good up up down down chin tuck chest open lovely nice last one and then we swap legs at the leg up first Good. Hands across your tummy is always a nice position. Thumbs reaching up to the ribs, fingertips stretching down. Two more. Lovely. Good stuff. Um, crunching. Pull your heels close. Stretch the hand, fingertips down to one side of the heel and then stretch to the other side. So we're going side to side, stretch, good. Keep scooping in the tummy but using those side muscles to reach each side. Great. Just rolling around on your spine on the hard floor is not <laughs> that comfortable. <laughs> two, one, and down. Great. Okay, legs back up again. Squeeze in the tummy, push a leg away and tighten the thigh and pull back in, push away, in. Good. Now, keep both legs in the tabletop and stretch one out. We go down to the floor and up. One, two, squeeze at the tummy. Three, you can put the other foot down if you're struggling. Four, five, six, seven. Cool, that's hard. I think we need a break in between. Bring your knees in and then we'll do the other leg. Harder than I thought. Great. Almost recovered, good. So both legs out, make sure they're hip width apart. Stretch out the other leg, the left leg. Down and up, one, two, three. Remember you can put the other foot down. Just the tips of the toes if you want to. Lovely, knees in, that was the hardest one. I like to finish with a hard one on the abs before we move on. So the next part, which is glutes, we've done some standing glutes, but they're a little bit different while you're, when you're lying down. So coming onto your side. Let's be up on the elbow today. You should feel like you can draw a straight line through your body here when you're up on the elbow. And make sure you push up out of it. Push up out of it, don't sink down into it. Push up out of it. And that, you should sort of feel yourself with your pelvis as well, pushing away with the top hip there, good. Make sure that bottom hip is tucked backwards, top hip is rocked forwards, and then you're lifting your top knee, scooping in your tummy. Good. So working here, working obviously the top glute, quite common to work the bottom glute as well. You won't all feel it, so it's not essential, but it's not wrong if you do. Feet up, you'll feel like you're kind of wound up there, tied in a knot almost, but get them up as high as you can and then keep on lifting the knee. Keep breathing nice and relaxed. Okay. Great. 
straight, bottom leg down, top leg forwards and backwards like that. Two, three, four, Lovely. Stretch the leg out, pull the toes up, pulse up and down. Oh, it feels hard today. I think we did a lot of glutes and standing perhaps. That might be why. Rotate the toes up and down. Oh, has stopped working, that glute. So other side. Glutes to exhaustion. Quite often when I know someone's quite fit and I know they need to work their glutes particularly hard, I say just keep going until you can't do any more. It's one of those body parts that can cope with that. So your elbows underneath your shoulders there, you push up and away, tuck your bottom hip back, scoop and tuck your bottom under, uh, top hip rocked forwards, bottom hip tucked back, and then lifting. I always wonder whether I've said everything, sometimes I repeat, but I can't see the harm in repeating it. Shows you how important it is. <laughs> Good. Feet up. Great. In my classes, this is when we usually have a conversation about what, we'll, what box sets we're watching at the moment. <laughs> it's going to get through <laughs> the glutes. Good. Bottom leg down, top leg forwards and backwards. Make sure you don't sway with the body. Dropping the shoulders away from the ears. Move up a little bit so I've got enough room. <laughs> Push the leg away, pulse up and down. Nice, and then rotate up and down. And this is where they start off at quite big rotations and now they're <laughs> waning. Stop there, bam. Coming up, crossing the legs. as usual, stretching out that part that we've just used. And actually, instead of a mermaid position, let's stay in this cross-legged position as long as your knees will cope with that. So if they won't, you could even sit up on a chair or something to do these. But let's come over to the side. Good, pick a side and keep going on that side. One, two, coming down to the elbow. It forces you to keep your hips down, you see, because your legs are tied in a knot. I'll do on that side and then we'll go to the other side. One, two, three. Last one. Oh, and I tell you what, I haven't got you guys um, forced you to do this one for a little while. <laughs> Push your hands behind you and try and push forwards. It's a horrible stretch. It's that sort of um, stringy kind of stretch up through those adductors, but it just shows how tight they can get. It's not only your hamstrings that get tight when you're sitting for any length of time. Hamstrings and back we tend to notice, but the, the adductors, the inner thigh, is quite significant as well. Good. Can we come over one way and then the other? Don't worry about how low you're getting. Good. So just, just nice and gently going from one side to the other. Good. One more each side. Good. And can you roll your toes in and out is really awkward. Don't expect big movement. And yes, sit back a little bit into your hands slightly. Good. But 
that has a good effect on releasing things all the way up through your back as well. On to hands and knees. Step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Now you can, or if you want, straighten out your back leg, if you want. Stretch up with the right arm and down with the elbow towards the floor. Two. Swapping sides, other foot towards the outside of the other hand, left hand, left arm reaches up, one, two, three, last one, good, from there, Pushing up into your downward dog position, and then you can push one heel down to the floor at a time. Scooping in the tummy, dropping the shoulders back towards the heels, one heel down at a time. Good. Now walk the hands to the feet. And hang there, do a couple of nice deep breaths here. Breathing in, breathing out and let the arms hang. Breathe in, breathe out. Try and sink that tiny bit further down. Bend and straighten each knee as well because that you'll feel higher up here compared with the calf on the last one we did. And roll your way back up. Good. Couple of breaths, lifting the shoulders, breathing in, round, breathe out and down. Breathe in as you reach up with the shoulders, lifting up, breathe out, round and down. Great, good work, thanks for joining me again.